Dark Secrets About Mark Cuban from Shark Tank. Hey guys, what's up? Welcome back to Film Visionary. The 1980s. Mark Cuban scrounged $15,000 together to purchase a bar during his undergraduate studies in business administration at Indiana University, Bloomington, Indiana. And it was a $15,000 deal, $1,500 commission to me. A university professor found the move to be audacious and admitted he had never seen an undergraduate or even an MBA student have a business while still in school. Mark employed his business skills to turn the bar into the city's most popular student bar. He continued to hunt for chances to turn underdogs into champions after his university days were over. Mark's first post-university business was Microsolutions, a tech company he sold to CompuServe in 1990 for a tidy amount of $6 million. Mark wanted to use that money to retire and live the life of a party boy for five years. He purchased a lifetime pass on American Airlines and traveled around the world in a quest to visit as many countries as possible. This year he's number 179 on the Forbes Wealthiest Americans. The 1990s. Five years later, Mark's retirement ended with a willingness to listen to the games of the basketball teams of his former university. He began AudioNet along with a friend, which soon grew to cover not only the Indiana Hoosiers games, but hundreds of sports channels and radio programs as well as product launches and fashion shows as well. The site, later renamed Broadcast.com, was one of the first internet radio sites in the world, and when it had its IPO in 1998, the stock got caught up in the dot-com frenzy and soared from $18 to $62.75 in a single day. Broadcast.com was later acquired for $5.6 billion by Yahoo, now Altava. He specifically foresaw the collapse of the dot-com bubble and began to option and liquidate his Yahoo shares as a way to secure his riches. The 2000s some people were asking at the beginning of the millennium how they had been so wrong about Y2K. Mark was closing the sale on his biggest buy though. Mark became the controlling owner of the Dallas Mavericks for an incredible $280 million. So in January, it's going to be 20 years Crazy. since you first bought the Mavericks. The team was considered the worst in the league, but Mark's leadership had turned the team into NBA champions by 2011. Okay, so we won the last game of the season, so we're officially champs, so I'll take your questions now. Forbes estimated that the Mavericks are valued at $2.4 billion as of February 2020. Construction of a new practice facility for $70 million is expected to result in a further boost to the team's valuation in the coming years. In January 2018, Cuban has announced that in the 2018-2019 season, the Mavericks will accept Bitcoins and other cryptocurrencies as ticket payment. Cuban was a vocal opponent of Bitcoin and in the summer of 2017 famously called it a bubble, but went on to invest in the cryptocurrency later that year. Cuban continues to broaden his position in the cryptocurrency graphic field, investing in tokens provided by Unicorn, an esports company that he supported in supporting the One Confirmation Cryptocurrency Fund. Mark Cuban has appeared on television shows such as Shark Tank and Dancing with the Stars, in addition to his company accomplishments. Mark runs 2929 Entertainment, a company that produces and distributes movies and TV shows when he is not watching his team from the sidelines. Here his record is mixed, as some of his films have become duds. Others, however, did make money. The George Clooney directed film Good Night, for example, and Good Luck had a $7 million production budget and 54 million lifetime gross. If he ever wants material for his national theater chain, Landmark Theaters, or his satellite TV channel, the first in HD, Access TV, this production company comes in handy. Mark is also known to regularly invest huge sums of money in the stock market, and if his talents are as good as they were in the early part of the century, there's no way he's making a lot of money out there. Over the years, Mark has appeared in numerous shows and films, and is also a prominent media personality. His most popular shows are Shark Tank, but he has also appeared on Dancing with the Stars, an entourage and Sharknado 2. The appearances serve a dual purpose to contribute to its net value. In popular imagination, they raise his popularity, drawing important and intelligent people into his sphere of influence. And for him, they carry more companies, whether in the form of successful startup investments or new opportunities. For example, according to ABC, during their appearance on the Shark Tank, Mark invested $1.75 million in obstacle course company Rugged Maniac. In 2018, an investment group bought an 80% stake in the firm. Cuban has sold its stake for twice the original amount of the investment in the firm, according to the Boston Globe. The bottom line. Mark Cuban is a perfect example of someone who enjoys business and is committed to growing up and being the man of his own making. He is also an investor in everything from toilet seats, numerous investment platforms, and sports technology, in addition to his media business and basketball squad. Also since 2012, Cuban has been a judge on the hit TV series Shark Tank and wrote a book in 2013. Shark Tank offers the guest judges an amazing opportunity to hear hundreds of previously vetted business proposals a year, and thus have the opportunity to invest 
and manage them from the ground up. Mark Cuban has found the ideal way to become extremely wealthy for a man who likes to expand companies and become famous. This brings us to the end of our video. I hope you enjoyed it. Hit like if you did and don't forget to subscribe to our channel so that you don't miss out on any of our videos in the future. Also, watch the two videos that are on your screen now because I'm sure you'll love them. With that, I'll see you in the next video.